This f***ing guy. Chris Jericho. Legend. Over 30 years of wrestling. Different styles, different companies. Champion all over the world. A bona fide legend in this industry. And a man who at one time, I considered the best of all time. However, in the big 2024, when I see Christopher Jericho on my screen, I don't get happy. I don't get mad. When he's a heel, I'm not yearning for him to lose. When he's a babyface, I'm not urging him to get that win. When he's on screen, I turn the channel. At this point in time, I just get bummed out when I see Chris Jericho on screen. And it's absolutely fascinating to me how prominent he is on broadcast American television in 2024. I'm not here to just vaguely complain about him or to say he stinks because because that ambiguous complaining is what feeds into his learning tree character. He's supposedly self-aware of all the criticisms he gets, much like I'm communicating right now about him getting too much TV time, about him being over the hill, about nobody wanting to see him. And the learning tree gimmick obviously leans into that. But here's the thing. Being self-aware about a problem you're causing, but opting to embrace that negative effect you have on the TV product, it's not clever. You're, you're not getting the fans. Oh, I'll show them. They think I'm getting too much TV time. Oh, I'll show them. Like, no, like, nobody's tuning in to see you. Nobody's buying tickets to see AEW to see Chris Jericho. Nobody's turning the channel to TNT or TBS to see Y2J go out there and be a shell of himself. I mean, I just don't know what value Tony Khan or AEW perceives Jericho to have at this point. I mean, obviously, it's the name value. He's, he was a big star in WWE. He was WCW, ECW. He went everywhere. Still has a lot of name recognition. I can acknowledge that, of course. But from firsthand experience, if I have wrestling on TV and I have non-wrestling fans come in or, or lapsed fans come in and check out the product, they see Chris Jericho walk to the screen and they all say a similar thing along the lines of, what the fuck happened to Chris Jericho? It's like if you had a carton of milk in the fridge and it expired in 2008, and it's 2024. You open the fridge, you open up the carton of milk. It's almost completely solid. It's curdled. It smells. It's green. It's bubbling. You go to throw it away. You open the trash can. But before you throw it away, that milk carton looks at you and says, but I can still do a moonsault and have a six pack. So I'm still good. Drink me. When the please retire chants were going, I was laughing because I've got a six pack and I can do a moonsault. Why would I want to retire? What's the point? Just because somebody told me to like. And while we're just whipping out analogies, let me throw another one at you. Chris Jericho is like Waffle House. Now there's a time and a place for Waffle House. 2 a.m. on a Saturday night. Delicious. Sometimes it's just what daddy needs. However, nobody wants Waffle House every single night. It's good every now and again, but when it gets thrown down your gullet every single night, you begin to have boiling hot diarrhea. But the more striking resemblance between Jericho and Waffle House comes in the fact when you are in Waffle House and you order something, you can see the cooks making whatever it is that you ordered, which in the context of a restaurant, that's fine. But in the context of pro wrestling, when you can see how the sausage is made, that kind of lifts the veil of what pro wrestling is. The beauty of pro wrestling is to be able to turn on a show, suspend your disbelief for whatever the course of time is that you're watching it, and to let it suck you in and to just be in this insane universe that is pro wrestling. The best of pro wrestling is when you can just watch and just believe that what is happening is actually happening. When Chris Jericho is on screen, it's so clear that wrestling is some fake bullshit. You can see it, the, the way he, he doesn't talk like a human being. He doesn't act like a human being. When he cuts promos, he talks like this and this Saturday at the Superdome. I'm gonna, like, like he has that dumb tone to all of his promos 
and it's it's always clunky. He talks on screen about having great matches. Whereas wouldn't you just be more concerned about winning them? Like he'll lose a match, but then he'll be like, I had a great match. Check out the cage match rating. It was great. Dave Meltzer rated. And I know he's kind of feeding into the fans and how they hate that shit. But if you've listened to Jericho over the years in interviews, you know, he actually values that type of shit. So the fact that he makes that a part of his on screen persona is not only cringe, but it brings up that veil of pro wrestling. That suspension of disbelief is completely obliterated when Jericho is on the screen because he's talking to the, he's playing to the internet fans because he thinks that's hip when he's cutting promos or he's on commentary. He'll be like, Oh, I had a feud with orange Cassidy and I really got him over. He talks in that manner. He talks in podcast speak. He kind of talks like Jim Ross does nowadays where he can't separate podcast and pro wrestling product. He just breaks the fourth wall down too much. To where it's impossible to suspend your disbelief when he's on screen. That's the fundamental issue with Jericho. That is the foundation of everything that is negative about him and what he brings to the wrestling product in 2024. And really, when you look at the course of time in Jericho's career, he's always, he's never been that guy. He's always been pretty good, like good enough to kind of hang with the top guys, but not the best. And I often wonder why. Like, if you go watch a 2003 promo from Chris Jericho, it doesn't age well. He's still kind of burdened by those bad instincts of talking too much like a pro wrestler and not like a human. Like, it's very clear that he, he's regurgitating lines that he wrote and not speaking from a genuine place. Like, it's tough to say that he has bad instincts when he's had the career that he's had. His career is successful despite of those bad instincts, not because of his instincts. Like I said, his promos are heavy handed. They're clumsy. They pull you out of the illusion that this is all real. And his narcissism kind of just gets in the way of him developing a character that makes sense. For example, Judas, the theme song that he came out to for years. Even when he was a heel, he would come out and hold his bat or whatever for the crowd to sing his song. He would urge the crowd to sing Judas with him. Oh, we're all together. Yeah, we're all fans of Chris Jericho. Hey, asshole, you're a heel. Why are you stoking the flame of fans participating in your entrance when they're supposed to hate you? You moron. This is why he never took fire as a heel in AW is because he never committed to it because his narcissism of wanting to be over superseded his desire to actually create a quality product with his matches or his promos or his segments, what have you. He shoehorns in first ever. By the way, he thought he was the first guy to come out and have the crowd sing his song, which is hilarious. Very out of touch, very desperate to kind of pad his career with these first evers when a lot of the times they're not first evers. First time Jericho and Sting are in the ring. First M Mimosa Mayhem, like en enough every time with this shit. And talking about his bad instincts, look at his current character, the learning tree. We already talked about why the gimmick itself is counterproductive, but also look at the faction. Big Bill. Big Bill does the gimmick better <laughs> than Jericho does. I'm not even going to touch on the fact that Jericho is basically rehashing a gimmick that Bo Dallas did about a decade ago and did it better than him. But Big Bill, the guy right next to him, he's more genuine. His dialogue is more subtle and it seems to flow better. He's a little bit delusional. He thinks the crowd loves him. He thinks the crowd loves Jericho and he's playing into it. When Jericho takes the mic, first of all, he's more interested in the hi guys pop every time that's all he has to it he just yells and he talks like this but he's just doing the normal jericho promos in a different voice so he's not really committing to the character or doing it well and it's like i said it's just a gimmick to feed into the internet who have criticized him for years by doing the things that the fans have criticized him for years i don't know what he thinks he's accomplishing by doing that i mean wrestling as a whole is better when you block out social media. Wrestling is so much better if you don't have Twitter or Instagram open as you're watching a show. And Chris Jericho is a walking embodiment of Twitter, which is a cancer to the wrestling industry. It offers little to no value. And so does Chris Jericho. And I said, and I used this term before, but it's his narcissism 
that keeps him on TV because he thinks he's serving a purpose. He thinks he's getting new stars over. Is he though? Let's look at his feuds. Name, name your favorite Chris Jericho feud. I'll wait. Bet you can't even think of one, can you? What, Adam Cole, Brian Danielson? He got bad matches out of those guys, which is virtually impossible on pay-per-view. What, Orange Cassidy, Daniel Garcia, MJF? These are all forgettable feuds that didn't have any character progression for those characters and didn't elevate them. And they kind of just, after the feud with Jericho, they just kind of went back to where they were because it wasn't about elevating those new stars. It was about Chris Jericho getting that notch on his belt to say, I worked with this guy. I elevated him. He didn't. But maybe his factions, maybe his factions did better at elevating new stars. Yeah, let's talk about the inner circle for a second. Sammy Guevara. <laughs> hey, Jake Hager is in a couple of his factions. Just a walking doorknob of a human being santana ortiz how they doing jericho appreciation society daniel garcia a faction that pretty much kept him locked away from reaching his potential which finally he has now that he's escaped the jericho vortex anna J, just a waste of time daddy magic cool hand Ange, yeah that faction did a lot for them a lot of progression for them yep and by the way can i just can we stop calling jericho the master of reinvention He's fucking not. He's had like four gimmicks over his career. Let's count them. Okay, let's call let's let's say base layer Jericho, which is you know ECW, WCW into early WWF. He had a face and a heel iteration of this, but ultimately it was the same thing. Pretty good wrestler with long hair. That's what Jericho was. And then he didn't have a new gimmick until suit Jericho, Nick Bockwinkle Jericho with the short hair and the suit and he, he changed the way his promos, it kind of fed into his wrestling style a little bit, but his overall presentation was very much different than it was beforehand. And then AEW Jericho, which, by the way, you know, Pain Maker, Demo God, uh, what else? What other fucking nicknames did he hand jam in there to try to get himself over but didn't? The Wizard, the, the, the Ocho. These new nicknames are not new characters. They're new nicknames with the same character. So that those aren't gimmick changes. That's not reinventing yourself. That's slapping on a new label onto an already expired product. I'll throw the learning tree even. I'll be generous. I'll say that's a new gimmick because it is a new take. He has new motivations. He has new delivery in his promos. In-ring style isn't very much different, but I'm, I'm generously saying four different characters among his career. The list, that wasn't a different character. He just had a scarf and had a different catchphrase. That is Jericho's career in a nutshell. I'm not over right now. Hmm, new nickname. Let's, let's be the king of bling bling or the king of the world or the Ayatollah of rock and rolla. He's done this throughout his whole career. It's this new catchphrase is trying to trying to hand jam in concepts for T-shirts rather than actually altering the presentation that he gives off on screen. And that's continued to this day, which is what frustrates me as a viewer or somebody who wants to enjoy AEW. And as of recording, Jericho is the new Ring of Honor champion, which is ultimately what prompted me to make this video because it is just such a blatant burial of the company of ring of honor they already talk about ring of honor in the past tense on commentary as if it doesn't exist whereas it fucking does it's a show you have to pay to see so jericho is a new ring of honor champion for for what reason him and mark briscoe had a pretty good match at wrestle dream and then what jericho wins in a ladder match so where do we go from here does mark briscoe win it again like why wouldn't we switch the ladder war in the in the match at wrestle dream why wouldn't mark briscoe ultimately just win it after Jericho, like it's, it's, it, the feud doesn't make sense. A lot of people say it's because Ring of Honor has a potential TV deal on the horizon, but is anybody going to tune into Ring of Honor to see Chris Jericho? No, nobody cares about Jericho. If anything, it's going to make Ring of Honor look more like AEW light than it already does. I would say he's killing Ring of Honor, but fuck man, it's already a dead carcass so really jericho winning the ring of honor title at this point is just further mutilating a cadaver on the table like it's 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 already dead and they're making it more dead that's just my take on jericho man there's a lot of problems with jericho and i think they could all be solved by fozzy taking a nice long tour overseas or on a different planet maybe perhaps i don't know i appreciate jericho for all he's done for the wrestling industry 
but there comes a time and a place where you have to just set your ego aside and admit your value to the company does not outweigh the negative impact that it has on the company. Nobody's buying a ticket or nobody's buying a pay-per-view or nobody's tuning in to see what Chris Jericho has to say or what Chris Jericho is going to do. I need to know what dirt Chris Jericho has on Tony Khan because TK could just say, hey, Jericho, I'm not booking you anymore. But obviously they have a very strong relationship of some sort. Maybe it's blackmail or whatever. I don't know. It's an unfortunate spot that we're in nowadays. Chris Jericho at one point was one of the best in the world. Now he's an asshole that puts on a fedora and calls it a new character.